And, and therefore, I'm, I'm very happy to, um, to, to basically talk next with, with you, see a little bit about how to use technology, in this case, artificial intelligence, um, to, to start where the food basically grows, where, where, where it starts its journey onto our plate. So, you see, if you could join me. Sure. Thank you very much. So, I mean, let, let's, let's maybe start with, with a short question. AML. What, what's the idea behind it? Why, why did you come up with, with the solution and, and, and the things you're doing? Well, it's, a, <coughs> it's quite a long story, but basically I was doing my PhD in computer science. Uh, I started already maybe seven years ago, and there was an opportunity to start working with a plant breeding company. And it was simply interesting from the point of view of computer science. So there's lots of data from you know, all kinds of like relations, and analyzing that is interesting, but then uh, then when I was uh, finishing my PhD, uh, I learned about funding opportunities for commercializing similar things, and of course I didn't know when starting it that in, I think in 2016, uh, uh, agriculture was, was the most, like sim single most funded field in the Silicon Valley. So it had kind of become a big thing in the meanwhile, and then I took the opportunity and was lucky enough to get funding for it, like proceeding with the work. Okay, cool. So, so how, how are you using AI in, in the agriculture context? Well, basically there are currently there are very many things that people are doing. So starting from using satellite images to analyze fields to find regions that require fertilization or uh, irrigation, uh, using drones for the same purposes. Uh, well, then there's there are all kinds of IoT solutions. So basically you can plant sensors in fields so that you will get up-to-date information about the need for irrigation, uh, analyzing market data, a yield prediction, that's what we are doing. So basically there are very many ways of using AI right now, identifying diseases. Uh, maybe from my point of view, the thing is that uh, it's not just AI. Uh, agriculture is currently one of those fields that is actually being affected by pretty much all of the megatrends. Mm -hmm. So everything from satellites, even Bitcoin, uh, biotechnology, and and AI has the AI is maybe the technology that is able to integrate all mm -hmm. those different things. So that's yeah, that's truly interesting. Oh, cool. Yeah, we we heard a lot already earlier about data and, and how important data is. In, in, in to analyze data, and actually AI is, is one of the key things in, in that context. So if, if you explain a little bit more detail, AgriML, what, what are you doing? What was the, the team doing on a day-to-day on -day basis to basically help the, 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 the food waste problem, but the early on to produce the right food, use the resources efficiently? Efficient. Sure. Actually, I could show a short yeah. demo right now. So. Uh, well, yes, I, as I mentioned, our background is in yield prediction. So it's a very simple question, which varieties should a farmer use on a particular field to get the maximum yield? That's kind of a, it's simple put this way, but then actually the solution is pretty complex. So there are many things that affect it, the weather, the soil, the management, and they have complex nonlinear interactions. So the solution, yeah, it's this one. So the solution is, is complex and uh, Due to confidentiality things, I can't really show you results with the real data, but I can show you an illustration of what the thinking is like. Let's see if you can. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Still. Um, yeah. yeah, there we go. Okay, great. So basically, here we see the uh, map of Finland, and uh, soon there will be an illustration of the existing paradigm, which is the assumption that the varieties that are good on the average are good everywhere. So here, illustrated with these two bars. Well, unfortunately, that's not quite true. So the optimal, like different plant varieties are sensitive to different kinds of stresses. And as a result, the optimal variety uh, for each place actually depends on the location. So now here we've done an illustration of what the results of the model would be like. So there, if, given that there are two varieties for each location based on the micro, in a microclimate, the soil type of the field, the management practices, uh, the expected yield that you can expect from the different varieties, they differ. And this is what we want to deliver the farmers with. Uh, we want to give them the solution to select the varieties that are best for them, uh, not just the varieties that are best on the average. So yeah, this is kind of this mass tailoring thing that is also going on in the uh, retail, very, 
well written and especially e-commerce. So it's not anymore about doing things that are good on the average. It's really optimizing every particular transaction. Okay, cool. Good. Um, I mean, it's it's actually nice to, to to show these pictures. But what's what's the what's the business model? How are you applying that? I mean, how how is that used yeah. in in an everyday way? Yeah. Well. Uh, okay. So uh, so. Our role, so first of all, we're not a company yet, so we're still a, a commercialization project here at the university. Uh, in the future, what we aim to be is a kind of a back-end provider for different uh, part, uh, parties. So, for example, there are these farm management system providers, so running a huge farm nowadays involves a lot of IT. You have a, you, like, they spend a lot of time on a computer, and we just want to provide this algorithms which, with which they can make accurate predictions, or as accurate as possible. And basically, well, the business model is in some sense quite simple. So if, you, if you're running a huge Russian farm with, let's say, 100,000 hectares of land, mm -hmm. if you're able to improve your yields by 2%, that's actually a lot of money. Uh, our main, main focus is still uh, in actually in the plant breeding part. So, uh, well, yeah. Uh, Plant breeding. So t today we've we've heard a lot of talk about reducing food waste, and food waste definitely is kind of a problem that needs to be solved. Uh, but, but maybe I would, uh, looking at it from the breeding point of view, uh, plant breeding produces uh, or increases yields or has increased yields by approximately 1.5 percent every year. So that means that this this 40 percent waste of food that corresponds pretty much to the breeding average of 30 years. Mm -hmm. But now the challenge is that we're having climate change that's going to affect things and uh, thinking about that we need to produce about 60% more food by 2050 that's going to need a lot of work especially from the plant breeding point of view so what we're doing is that we are providing plant breeders with tools uh, computational tools and also other things which would help them make the breeding process more efficient mm -hmm. cool. and, and that's, that's back I guess to the point of using resources more, more efficiently in, in the process. Yes, yes, so, so talking about circular, let's put it this way, that agriculture hasn't been very circular for a long time. So I don't, I don't know what's the, what are the numbers like nowadays, but for every calorie that you consume of food, uh, you need quite many calories of, of uh, basically fossil fuels to produce that food. And yeah, it's, there's, a, there's a long way, we need a lot of improvements in the efficiency, maybe organic Farming is not the maybe not be the right term, the optimal term, because there you end up often mm -hmm. producing even more CO2 yeah. for mm -hmm. every calorie. But it's something called uh, I think it's minimal input farming, where you try to really optimize the yields that you get as compared with the resources that you need to use. Mm -hmm. Good. And I, I think it's a, it's a new way of, of measuring as, as well. At, at the at the end of the day, if you if you compare what you put in, the resources you put in, and, and what you get out, rather than just looking at what you get out at, at the end of the day. Very much so, and, and I'm really happy to see that that's, uh, that's a development that's even going on in the, at the mm -hmm. level of EU. So these kind of ideas are really coming into agriculture, and they are going to wait, change the way in which things happen. Very good. And any questions here in the room before I spend all the time with, with, my, with my question? I find the topic very fascinating to, to use AI, the latest technology, to really start looking at food wh where we start producing it at, at the end of the day so that we use the right crop, that we use the right, right uh, um, approach for different regions uh, in, in that way. Any questions here? Yeah, I'm interested about the traceability, the origin of the food. I, I'll think all of us who, who deal with the kitchen data or food data, they are interested to solve this uh, traceability problem. Have you well, we uh, we actually submitted a funding, uh, like or did a funding proposal for that particular topic. So the digital, like in principle, the technology for the traceability is there, but I don't think that it's really available yet. And that's very much an interesting topic. No, we haven't worked on it yet. Uh, we tried, but we didn't get the opportunity. So if you are interested in that, let's definitely talk. We yeah. were we were the yeah, yeah. Let's talk more. Mm, cool. So one topic for the networking part already locked in. A any other any other questions? Do you have any experience working with hyperspectral, multispectral data? Um, personally, no. Uh, in, in, uh, 
the things that so so we are also working with image processing. That's a very critical and, and from my point of view, it's just changing the sensor. So the algorithms are pretty much the same, which which you need. Uh, and the crops that we are working on, we we haven't needed that yet. But yes, I I'm aware of the theme, and that's yeah, in the process. Okay, perfect. Maybe one one last question. I mean, from your point of view, where are we? In in oh sorry. Yeah, so do you see, um, I'm not quite sure quite what you're into with the plant breeding, yep. but do you see that we can provide um, enough resources without um, significant genetic engineering of plants? Oh, this is a dangerous question. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, well, uh, well, okay, to answer this question in a sensible way, I yes. think that we need to take a one step back. So I'm not very much pro any particular technology, it's just always choosing the solution which are like comparing the risks of different solutions. So I'll give, so in this context I think it's fair to talk about for example potato. Yeah. So no one wants to eat in Europe genetically engineered potato, but then two years ago are there are people here who eat organic potatoes? No? Okay, anyway, they weren't available and the reason was that there was a potato plague going around the world and due to which it wasn't possible to grow potato that would fulfill the sales conditions in an organic way. And then, of course, of everyone was able to buy regular potato, but then the, when thinking about this genetic engineering, the question was that like, people really don't know how much uh, spraying with chemicals it requires to get rid of those diseases. And the alternative in the US that they used was they, they used genetic engineering to transfer genetic material that made the potatoes immune. So, like, uh, this is basically the question that we are asking. Well, like, which we have problems and we need to find some solution. And for some problems, genetic engineering may be the least harmful. For others, it may be something else. But that's really the coolest thing about this agriculture thing. Uh, you get a chance to be in the place where these different technologies meet. Like, really now in 2018 and not in 2025, and that's really cool. Yeah. Okay, Be before I jump in, I'm still looking if there's other questions. <laughs> there, there is one. One sort of question, is it easy for farmers to utilize your uh, service? Well, uh, well, well, first of all, we're not integrated to anything in Finland yet. So, so no, definitely right now. Uh, of course, what we... Uh, so okay, maybe may, uh, so. So in in other countries, uh, well, in Finland there are also digital services already available, and in other countries, I think that it's been made quite easy. So I think that it's uh, the main advantage that the digital technologies have compared with the other kind of ways of investment in, in agriculture is that it's cheap. So in that sense, it's easy to like a tractor costs quite a lot as compared with a computer program. So. Well, oh, yeah, so we, we, no, we haven't been in, like, okay, so, no, we, we haven't uh, been looking into the kind of the integration of the demand end with the supply end, and that's, of course, a huge problem, so if you think about what's being produced in the world, if you look at what's uh, kind of the plate model for what people should eat, and then you compare that with what's being produced, basically 75% of calorie production is maize, wheat, rice, then if you look at the plate model, there's not so much of these three there. So, uh, so of course, there are huge problems there, and uh, those things are also being considered at the European level. For example, so how to make the demand uh, really meet the supply better. And I think that is one of the major uh, parts in solving this kind of food problem that we are quite soon running into. So a good question, important topic. Perfect. Thanks, Josie.